Hey guys, what's up? Today I'm going to be doing a Q&A. Why was the Q in the Q&A so like wet? I've only done one Q&A in the past and it was for 100,000 subscribers and now we're at 400,000 subscribers. So it's been a while and I've been wanting to do a Q&A first of all because I get a lot of the same questions over and over again. Also, this video will not take a million years to come out because I don't have to deal with any copyright blocks on it like I do my other videos. So I thought it would be a fun video that I could actually post after I edit without waiting like weeks. So I asked you guys on Instagram to send me some questions a while ago. I actually asked you guys for these questions a while ago, but I couldn't film a Q&A then because I had to get out other videos first. So now I'm finally going to be answering these questions. If you guys ever want to send me your questions, I usually ask on Instagram. So my Instagram is at tkalevel. So make sure you guys go follow me there if you'd like to send questions or just see what I'm posting on there. Now a quick message from today's sponsor, Casetify. Now I'm sure you've heard about Casetify before because they have a very, very cute and popular cases. Now I've always thought Casetify cases were super cute and I've always wanted them. So the fact that I get to do this is amazing. Not only does Casetify have super cute designs and so many different options you can choose from, they are also really good to protect your phone. Personally, I do drop my phone a lot, so to have a case that is actually protective and has um, bumpers on the side is super helpful. And Casetify lets you have the best of both worlds, military grade drop protection and a stylish phone case you'll actually want to show off. It's not bulky like other protective cases, so you're still going to get the protection you need without it being too too thick or clunky and ugly. And they really do protect your phone. Casetify cases will keep your phone safe through drops of more than six feet. Casetify also has super cool collaborations on their website right now. They have ones with Lisa Frank, Rolling Stones, Karen Walker. They also have a new Hello Kitty line that's on their website. And they've also done a collab with some of your favorite YouTubers like Avery Ovard. You can either choose from thousands of designs they have on their website, or you can customize your own case with your favorite color and font. So make sure you guys go to Casetify com slash trend today to get 20% off and match with me. There will be a link in the description as well as the comment section. Thank you Casetify for sponsoring today's video and without further ado, let's get started. What made you love movies? I feel like it's like every movie that you watch. I think what made me love movies, like it wasn't necessarily like a specific movie, it was that feeling after you leave a movie theater after you watched a movie and all you want to do is talk about it because you've been sitting there watching it not being able to talk not be able to say your feelings and then right after you just get to talk and like that is my favorite feeling ever i love getting out of movie theater and talking to people about the movie and explaining how certain scenes made me feel or certain things i liked or didn't like and What's crazy is that one of the movies that actually made me realize that I really like talking about movies was, surprisingly, this is like so not like what you would expect, or maybe it is what you would expect. It was Breaking Dawn part one. I don't know why, I can't explain it, but Breaking Dawn part one, I really, after I got out of the theater, I just wanted to talk to someone about it. I wanted to, talk about everything that happened in it because I was like what just went down what just happened we have to talk about this um another one x-men first class I've done a video on x-men first class and I've explained that it is like one of my favorite movies ever and after I watched it I completely fell in love with it and just wanted to talk about it afterwards so I think it's not necessarily like a specific movie that was like, oh, I love movies. Like I always knew I liked watching movies. Like everyone watches movies when they grow up and everyone kind of enjoys them. I would say majority of people, like the average person you meet likes movies. For me, it's about like talking about the movie afterwards, like talking about that scene that I, I don't think anyone remembered. And I just want to talk about it. It makes me so happy that I can make content that is just talking about movies because that is what I love and I love getting to know more about movies and getting to talk more about different parts of a movie that, you know, maybe I wouldn't have noticed before if I didn't make videos on it. So now I'm noticing more things and I'm talking about more things and it just, I don't know. I know I just went on a whole ramble about that, but I might not be the best technical critique of a movie 
but just getting to talk about movies and kind of rambling on about it is what makes me so happy. So I know I'm not a film major and I don't properly break down a movie, but just getting to do that like ramble at the end or ramble during it and getting to talk about the movie is just an incredible feeling. Like, you know that feeling when you get out of the movie theater? It is just un- Describable. It is amazing. I got some questions about changing the content on my channel. Like, do you ever feel like you would make different content or do you ever think about going a different direction with your channel? Right now, no. I, I really don't because right now I love what I'm making and I'm trying to get better at what I'm making right now. I definitely want to do more things with movies. I don't think I'm ever gonna stray away from movies. Maybe in the future, once I get a kind of hold on things, I might maybe do other movie related content. I wanted to do videos on dressing up as my favorite movie characters or TV show characters, um, similar to like uh, Kennedy Walsh, because I know Kennedy has more of a like lifestyle channel but she also does stuff that's also related to movies i think she did one where she like made uh dishes from movies and then she did she does a bunch of dressing up as uh movie characters or tv show characters so i think maybe i will dive into other things but not straying away from movies i think i really want to keep this on movies and shows because that's always going to be something that I really like talking about. There's not been anything about this channel, about working on this channel or videos that has made me stop loving movies or TV shows or talking about them. Someone asked, where do you find style and makeup inspiration? For style, I do go on Pinterest now. I used to not go on Pinterest, but I look at Pinterest. Um, I get a lot of inspiration from Avery Ovard. I think she has like the best style ever. I love her style so much. So I'm always looking at her Instagram and seeing what she's wearing and what kind of outfits she's putting together. Inspiration for makeup, um, I usually look at an editorial hashtag on Instagram or Twitter and find something that I like and then go from there. Someone asked, how do you identify? I get this question a lot. I've actually posted on Twitter how I identify um, sexually sexually as my sexual orientation um how do i identify wait is identification do they mean my race or do they mean my sexuality let's do both okay so my ethnicity my nationality all that stuff nationality i was born in the united states i was texas made baby i my mom's chinese and then my dad is like mixed so hawaiian portuguese japanese and some sort of European in there. But for the most part, I just say I'm mixed. I don't really like going into detail about that. I think I've talked about that in another video. Um, and my sexual orientation, I am bisexual. I have not been trying to hide that. Uh, I posted on Twitter, posted it on my old Twitter a very long time ago. Um, not something I really talk about, not something that I really want to talk about and that's not because I don't want to be a voice for people it's just for me it's like my personal life and I try to you know keep some boundaries between internet and personal life I don't I'm not like ashamed of it or anything but to me like who you like is like not anyone else's business unless I'm dating you, like it doesn't really matter. But I don't get offended when people ask, I, I I get it. Like I get being curious about people's sexual identity. So I don't get like upset about it, but I do, I don't talk about it all the time because it's not, I just don't feel like it, whatever. <laughs> um, someone asked, what's a life lesson you learned from being homeschooled? Now, if you don't know, I'm homeschooled. I mentioned this in my last Q&A. Um, I'm homeschooled, or I guess not, because I just graduated. I graduated, no longer in high school, baby. Um, <laughs> I've been homeschooled all through my education so far from I went to kindergarten, that doesn't really count. So from elementary school through high school, I've been homeschooled. And I think I've learned a lot from being homeschooled. I think there's these preconceived notions of homeschoolers and stereotypes within them. And to me, I I, I understand where the stereotypes come from because I see it. <laughs> I, I, 
I see the homeschool community and I know what you guys are talking about, but I also feel kind of bad because a lot of people don't know why people are homeschooled and it's not just because they're super religious. A lot of people assume that because you're homeschooled, you're super religious or you're in homeschooling because of that, but homeschooling can be a thing for many different reasons. It could be you had a hard time in public school and the pace that they were going at was too fast for you or even too slow. So homeschooling basically allows a bunch of kids to have custom curriculum for them um, rather than sticking them in a public school system where it is um, kind of like a, here's your pie, take it. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. I think I learned how to be the truest version of myself. I know this is kind of getting deep or whatever, but homeschooling, I wouldn't trade the experience. I would not trade being homeschooled for a few good public school experiences of the social life because a lot of people's mental health deteriorates throughout public school because it's a really toxic place for people um, whether that's the kids surrounding them the education is too quick for them and they need a little bit more time i had the choice to go to public school it was always on the table for me my mom said i could go if i wanted to and i never wanted to because I liked homeschooling. I liked being homeschooled. I wouldn't go to public school for those few good experiences for a majority bad experience. And that's not for everyone. I know a lot of people have a great high school experience and they love it or just public school experience. They love it. They had the best time of their lives. They had all these fun experiences. And I feel like I've had fun experiences too and I was not in public school. Being homeschooled, I got to start a YouTube channel because I was homeschooled and I loved starting a YouTube channel. I probably would have never started a YouTube channel if I was in public school. I would have been way too embarrassed to do that, but since I was homeschooled, um, I wasn't influenced by other people. I wasn't scared to post because honestly, I didn't have that many friends. If not having a bunch of friends gave me this channel where I can talk to so many other people, then I'm super grateful for that. Because I had friends, I just didn't have like a whole group. Someone asked, what's your number one YouTube pet peeve? A huge pet peeve is copyright. I hate the copyright system on YouTube. I think everyone hates the copyright system on YouTube. The copyright system on YouTube does not favor creators at all. If you don't know what, how copyright works or how the copyright claims that I deal with work, basically every single video that has a movie in it gets copyright claimed. And that means the claimant who's claiming the movie um, sends a claim in and they say, this is, this is mine. And they block it, they block it and they demonetize it. <laughs> and then you have to dispute it. So you have to write reasons why it's fair use. You have to click the reasons. You have to go through this whole legal form. But fair use and copyright stuff is very gray area. The laws on it are kind of iffy. And when you send in a dispute, it doesn't go through YouTube. Once you end up in the copyright dispute claim area, YouTube doesn't help you anymore. It doesn't, YouTube doesn't like look over it to make sure the claimants being fair or the creators being fair and what they're disputing it just like lets you the the claimant and the youtuber just be like hey hello your dispute goes straight to the claimant and then they decide if your dispute is fair or not and sometimes they don't agree with you and they block your video or they take down your video and YouTube doesn't help you and if you want to continue like if you want to still up to that video you have to like take it to court like you can appeal it and then if they reject the appeal too you have to go to court and like file a lawsuit and like no YouTube video is worth that you know I think that if you are looking to do movie commentaries I would strongly suggest you see if you really want to do it if you really love talking about movies if you really are passionate about it i would say do it but look into copyright and see if it's worth it or worth the time because it is it sucks it sucks so bad 
What's something you're proud of, but don't get a chance to talk about? I would honestly say something that I'm proud of that I don't get a chance to talk about is my channel. I don't talk about it to people outside of this other than like a few people, but like it is something I'm super proud of and something that I I love so much that I'm able to do. I have been working on this channel since I was like 12 and I'm like 18. I'm almost about to be 18. I'm 17 right now. July 7th, that's my birthday. Also, it says July 6th everywhere on the internet. If you look up my birthday, it says July 6th. My birthday is not July 6th, it is July 7th. I don't know why I just got so angry about that, but I went through a lot of different phases on my channel. I went through wanting to be a beauty guru in the start, and then I went to recaps of Teen Wolf, and then I went to reactions of shadow hunters and teen wolf and stranger things and and i even had a k-pop reaction phase as well and i was just trying so many things and like none of them were really like it because whenever i was doing that i was doing quantity over quality and it was just not working and then i found pretty much it and dylan is in trouble and i watched their videos and i was like you know what i love talking about movies i i have to try this i have to get over this like daunting task of editing that much footage and just do it like now the people that i like that inspired me like Dylan is in trouble and pretty much it now I've like met pretty much it. I filmed a video with pretty much it. I did a live stream with Jacob the other day Dylan is in trouble knows who I am and I've talked to him before like I just <laughs> it still stuns me to this day because they're just like everything like when I filmed my hundred thousand q a i said in that video like pretty much it and dylan's in trouble like the youtubers that inspire me and now i've filmed a video with pretty much it and i've talked to dylan is in trouble like that's crazy to me someone asked if you could direct any genre of film what would it be um now i'm not this is not me trying to say that i want to be a director in my days um i would definitely want to create this is so typical, but a coming of age story. Almost like a movie like eighth grade or something where it takes a certain period of time and really just gets it right. As always, make sure to share and subscribe to my channel, Gucci. It captures that year or era of your life and it just is so on the dot. Like eighth grade is one of the best movies I think I've ever seen for it's just crazy accuracy on that year that era i would love to make a movie like eighth grade where maybe like not the same thing but like just where it captures a year or an era of time and it just does it so well and i would love to do that in a coming of age story that captures not only the feelings and the emotions of a character during that specific year of their life but also the time of it the, the social media age that it was in, what was happening. Like eighth grade had such a nostalgia to it as well as um, this relatability to it that I loved. And I would love to, like, I would, that would be my dream to make a movie that, like a coming of age movie where it's not only like a character that you can relate to, it's like a whole era of time that you can relate to. like. That's amazing. What's the worst film you've ever watched? Swiped. Swiped with Noah Centineo in it. Um, directed by that person that we won't talk about. So yeah, Swiped is the worst movie I've ever watched. It sucks in every possible way and I'm sorry to the actors that were in it. Favorite Animal Crossing villager? I guess I have like a favorite on my island. Like I probably have a favorite overall the villagers, but I'm, I'm, I'll stick to what I have on my island. My favorite villager that I have, I like, okay, I like three of them. I like Lyman, the koala, because he was my, he was one of my first villagers that I had. So I have a special place in my heart for him. Like the first two, he was one of them. 
And then Candy. Candy's so cute and she's so like, she's such a queen. And then I just got a new one. Her name is Willow. She's a ram or she a ram. And she's so cute and I love her so much. So yeah, those are my favorite. Oh, what's your feel good movie? I have a bunch of feel good movies. Let me see. Let me go to my letterbox. If you wanna follow me on letterbox, it's the same as my Twitter, at level trend. Usually I go to Disney movies when I think of feel good movies. Um, so like Lilo and Stitch. Alice in Wonderland, Enchanted, which I did a video on, She's the Man, which I did a video on. Like those are really just good, feel good movies. Um, Love Rosie, love that movie. Did a video on, but fucking copyright is not letting me post it. So I don't know if that video will ever come out. So I'm really sorry. And a bunch of old uh, book adaptation films like The Maze Runner, um, even Divergent, the first one, or Twilight movies, like to me, those are feel good movies because I just like laughing or The Maze Runner, I just think it's like a good movie. Um, the Hunger Games, Harry Potter, like those types of things, like they just hold nostalgia with them as well, but they're actually pretty good movies. Well, Twilight, debatable, but it does make me feel good. I do like, I'm gonna watch Twilight if it's on cause I just think it's, Ranking Glee characters from Icon to Mr. Shoe. Okay, so this is my personal list. You can disagree, that's fine. Number one is Mike Chang. I've always been a huge Mike Chang supporter and he might have not had any real um, character on the show other than being a background character because the writers didn't write him to do anything. But I know that if he, had the, if he was given a real storyline, he would have been the best character. Like he has so much potential and they literally didn't do anything with it. So, and he's really underrated. So my Chang is at the top for me because he's just a baby and I really wish he had more in the show. And I, you know what? I loved his songs that he had. I, like, I know he said he couldn't sing, but I love the songs he had. So Mike Chang at the top. Um, I'm gonna do, Quinn, misunderstood, main girl, love her. Mercedes, because Mercedes was just the best. Mercedes wins vocally. I'm gonna do Sam. Also wish Sam and Mercedes had the ending that they deserved, by the way. Um, and then I'm gonna go with Brittany. Oh my God, I totally forgot about Santana. I'll do Santana and then Brittany because Santana kind of rubs me the wrong way mostly to do with uh, Naya's <laughs> impact on her, my opinion about Santana, but and Santana was really mean to Sam, even though Sam <laughs> didn't do anything. So, cause everyone else that Santana was mean to, I really think it was fine. Like she was mean to Rachel and Kurt. Also Sa Santana was very biphobic. <laughs> um, after Santana, Brittany, I don't know. I don't have an explanation for Brittany. I don't feel like trying to justify my placement for her. I'm struggling for this spot right here. Number number seven. So I'm deciding between Tina and Blaine. I think I'm gonna go with Tina because although she was a little bit annoying, I feel like she was overshadowed, a little bit underrated. Um, then I'm gonna do Blaine because Blaine was really problematic too in the show, but I love his voice. Vocally, I would rank Blaine super high, but Character wise, put him right there, number eight. Oh, I totally forgot about Kurt. I'll just put Kurt there. They can be like interchangeable at that spot. They can tie. Yeah, they can tie for whatever. They could be interchangeable. They both did mess up things, so whatever. Uh, I guess Artie. Oh my God, I totally forgot about Finn. Um, Finn said the F word, so it doesn't even matter where he is. <laughs> okay, so Finn, I guess Artie. I don't know why I put Artie so low, but I guess that's just where he ends up because I forgot about him. I guess Rachel Puck, Mr. Shoot. I feel like there was a question that probably asked me what my favorite YouTubers were, but I didn't save it. So I'll answer it anyways. I love a lot of different YouTubers. All my commentary girlies like Casey and Julia and Ashley, love them the best. I love obviously pretty much it and Dylan is in trouble and Curtis Connor and Danny Gonzalez and Drew Gooden. <laughs> 
and Avery Ovard and Kennedy Walsh. Been loving Angelica Oles. I love learning about YouTuber drama. So fun. And I think that's all the questions I'm gonna do for today. I hope you guys like this video. If you guys want me to do another Q&A in the future or non-commentary videos in the future, definitely let me know what types of non-commentaries you would like me to do um, and if you even wanna see them because these are good filler videos for when I am not able to post a video because of copyright issues. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned a little bit more about me because I feel like I get a lot of the same questions all the time, so answering them is pretty fun. And usually in my movie commentaries, I feel like I don't talk about myself that much or I don't talk about like questions that you guys ask a lot. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, Instagram at tkalevel and Twitter at leveltrin. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications bell as well if you'd like to be notified every single time I post a video. Bye.